so let's navigate to our Go folder. That would be in github.com, the ape machine, and then ape bbf. That's where I've uh, created the project. The only file I have is a logo that I, um, I just took my that logo and ran it through uh, an ASCII or NC generator. It basically creates these uh, NC escape codes uh, that will uh, perform various actions on your terminal. For instance, selecting a new color or uh, jumping to a specific position. And this will be able to draw uh, art for us and that will be clear um, very soon. So, um, first thing, we want to delete everything and create our main package and our main function. So, what we want to do is basically people will connect to our Telnet uh, server and they will be presented with the logo. So, first of all, we need to uh, load that logo uh, file that I just showed you. So, um, let's use IOUtil read file uh, we call it logo.env um, let's check the error Oops. Uh, let's just panic and print out the error all right, we need a new channel for our client jobs and uh, that will basically handle any connection uh, handling and we will have a type called client job. You can think of channels in Go kind of like a communication method between Go routines that uh, keeps things memory safe. We, we will explore that a lot more but for now it's, it's good to know that uh, a channel is just another type and it, it, it takes a type. So you can read and write from a channel and basically you can pass them around between Go routines so that they can communicate bet between each other through that channel. So let's uh, define that type. Uh, we can do it up here. We're just gonna, we're just gonna keep this all in one file to keep it clear. Um, so a client job, which will be a struct. Um, it has a command, which is a string, and it has a connection, which is uh, a net connection. So that's coming from that package. Uh, oops. That's coming from the net package here. Okay. So now that we have client jobs, we can. Um, we basically want to do generate responses and pass client jobs in there. But we want to do that uh, concurrently so that becomes a goal routine. And then once you write that generate responses function, it will become a bit clearer. So we accept the client jobs, which is a channel of the type client job. And then we have an infinite loop here that um, reads from the client job jobs channel. So it reads a message from that channel that we uh, created uh, here, and we are passing into uh, generate responses. All right. We need a little delay here. Uh, this is a bit of a hacky way to write a delay, but it's fine. Now. Uh, we, we will have a little command called logout, uh, which will be a client job command. Oops. 
and we will have a response when somebody types that. That is a uh, byte. Oops, that's not good. Uh -huh. Oops. And we'll just say bye. Okay. And then we need to break the uh, infinite loop because we are still in this uh, infinite loop. Uh, right on. So now uh, we can. We can just echo the command. So we've, we've basically implemented two paths here. Um, somebody can uh, write logout and then it will close their connection and write to them bye. And then here it will close the connection. And here we'll just echo the command whatever they type in so we, we have some sort of way to trace back um, where we want to implement more logic in the future. Uh, so now we have that routine running. Uh, we need to uh, actually start listening for our, uh, with our server. So we can do a net dot listen. Uh, listen on TCP. And um, for now we'll no. <clears throat> I might have nginx running there. Let's do three thousand three. Um, and then we have to check the error. We can just panic. We're not doing some real error checking here. Okay, so let's uh, start an anonymous Go routine. Uh, realize that you have to put these um, brackets here to actually execute the function. Otherwise you're just defining the function and not executing it. So we need a buffer um, that's coming from buff.io uh, new reader and pass in the connection so we can read uh, from that connection. Now, um, let's write some things to the newly connected uh, people. Uh, did it again. Up. So. This is sort of, um, I guess, magic. But these are escape codes that um, that will allow you to to work with your terminal in a, a much more advanced way. Instead of just printing text to the screen, you now get the chance to actually. It's more like drawing text on the screen. Um, I will put in some escape code uh, information on the side. Um, because it's it's a little too complex to just put into um, a video like this to fully dive into. Uh, however, if you've ever wondered how something like Vim is made or how certain terminal programs seem to have uh, almost magical powers of writing uh, to the screen in a more drawing kind of format, uh, that's how that is done. Uh, escape codes are just a way to render um, characters on the screen. Yeah. Uh, a little welcome message. And then we're going to print that logo out. Now, what's so nice that we've converted that logo already into uh, escape codes via some sort of online tool. Because I can just pass that uh, string data in here and it will be immediately just interpreted as uh, escape codes and therefore rendered. So let's start one more infinite for loop here. And then uh, we have to write uh, one more thing to the console. 
a little prompt. Oops. And then we can start reading input from the user. So, um, and we will wait for um, a new line. So when they press enter, and then uh, do one more thing, and that is, uh, always remember that when a user press enter, that is also a character, so you have to usually kind of strip those out. Um, I will do it like this. What I'm doing here is stripping out the slash n from the string that was typed by the user, because when the user types, they press enter, the enter key, which is the slash n, is added to the user input and then sent to us. Now if we expect to compare that string, um, for instance logout, with a, a command list of where logout is in that list, we would have to add slash n to that comparison list, because that's really what the user is sending us. So that's why I'm saying usually you strip off the slash n of user input first, and then you start doing your comparisons to keep things organized. And then, should have maybe done that one step before, to be honest. Um, just break here, it's fine. And then here, what we will do is send the new client job which is that command that they just uh, typed uh, to our client jobs channel uh, with the connection there as well. So let's see if we can run this. Oops. Too many arguments, undefined con. Okay, we have some issues. don't have a, a connection here and that makes sense because does it? It does. I should have actually um, made another for loop here, say more like this, that wraps this all together. actually initialize my connection um, from that server that we created so make sure that it can actually accept connections like this and um, handle the error again we'll just panic and fail hard and fast Oops. now that should do it Still doesn't. Uh, too many arguments to conversion to client job. Client job command and connection. Ah. Wrong type of brackets. All right. So that seems to be running now. Uh, let me open a new tab and then we can do telnet uh, localhost and we set 3003 and it will say here welcome to the BBS for some reason in brown letters uh, but that's done with that NC uh, uh, escape code and then here you have that logo that uh, is rendered from the file and now we should be able to type logout and it says uh, bye so uh, yeah, that was it. That's kind of like, um, I wanted to work on that for a while, a long time ago, because I'm kind of nostalgic for BBSs and I thought it would be a cool sort of retro way of creating a sort of a community hangout. Like I said, there, there are um, still plenty of uh, fully functional um, BBSs out there that use the original software modified to um, use telnet connections instead of phone, but yeah.